80 and dropping. Saw. PP 75. Spreader. We should wait for the senior resident. He's bleeding out. We don't have time. You ever done this before? Only on a cadaver in anatomy class. BP 70. Not to worry. Palpate spine. Now the aorta. BP 65. Come on. Something wrong? I can't find the aorta. BP 60. If you're gonna do it, doctor, do it. Come on. BP 55. All right, got it. Aortic clamp. BP 50. BP 60. 70. 80. 90. 105. Lady Poppy Cherry, Dr. Ferguson. Only your second day on the job. Our congratulations to Dr. J. Ferguson, who has just saved his first life. But tonight, he will meet a patient who will challenge all his assumptions about living and dying in the Twilight Zone. Your husband's gonna be fine. Oh, thank you so much. God bless you. Go! Go! What do we got? Attempted suicide found hanging in an abandoned warehouse. Vitals? Heart rate 20, blood pressure 60 over 30, respiration 12. Looks like you got him down just in time. I don't know about that. This transient we talked to said the guy had been hanging there over 20 hours. Bombs in there, wrong. One, two, three. He's ice cold. Thermal blankets? Yes, sir. Any ID? No ID, just this. It's empty. He's coming around. Sir, do you know your name? Sir? Can you say that again, please, sir? I am dead. We're traveling to another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are only that of the imagination. You're entering the Twilight Zone. No, I know I didn't ask him why he hung himself. You're the shrink you asked him. That's six hours from now, what am I supposed to do with him until then? <laughs> Preliminary evaluations, right? Uh, 39 hours and counting. Better keep chugging that coffee. Seen residents work 50, 60 hours. I'm counting. Fifth floor, head nurse. The wind beneath my wings, Linda. Hello, I'm Dr. J. Ferguson. Look, Doc, you don't have to worry about me. I'm not going to do it again. That's good to hear, but still a hospital. I mean, I would if I could, but hanging up there for 22 hours pretty much answered that question. That's a long time. Not to me. But I should have known I was wasting my time. I'm not even alive. Now, what makes you think you're not alive, Mr. Uh, what? I already told you. Death. You don't like that one? I answered to plenty of others. Anubis, Thanatos, Yang Hua, the big sleep. Take your pick. You ever tried anything like this before? Mm -hmm. But I thought about it a lot. Well, it sounds like depression. You figure that out all by yourself? What are you, a specialist? So when did you start feeling this way? I don't know. I guess somewhere in the mid 1300s. Uh... All right, look. I'm really trying to help, but you got to work with me here, Mr. Okay? Bedside Manor, remember you asked me a question? I'm answering it. The mid-1300s, the Black Plague, took out a third of Europe, went a little light on France. 
That's not enough to get you depressed. I don't know what is. L let me get this straight. You're trying to commit suicide because you feel responsible for the Black Plague? No, not the Black Don't you get it? Death isn't just my name. It's what I do. It's what I've been doing day in and day out since the beginning of time. Well, I guess that's enough to make anyone depressed. I've had it. I can't take it anymore. I quit. Really? So no one's going to die anymore? Yeah, you got it. Might put you out of a job. So if you quit, why try to commit suicide? Because they're just not going to let me quit, are they? They? They, they, the celestial choir, the harmonies of the universe, the ancient gods, the fates, whatever you want to call them. I have to take this. Oh, go ahead. Can't help me anyway. I wouldn't say that. We have a very good psychiatric department here. You guys, you never give up on a patient, do you? I always like that about this hospital. You've been here before? Plenty of times. Why don't you give me your real name so I can look up your records? You're very funny. I remember the first soul I ever collected from this place. Bill Bream. Little Billy Bream. March 9, 1968. Don't believe me, Jay. Look it up. Look it up. You rang? Yeah, eight-year-old girl with a fever in exam B. How's our John Doe? Oh, says he's responsible for the Black Plague. Oh, that's good. Now we know who to blame. Yeah. How are you holding up? Oh, except for this pounding in my head and the fact that my eyes are about to drop out of my sockets. I'm getting my second wind. Good floor. Oh, you do me a favor. Yeah, I'll hold. Sure. Get, get me the name of the first patient to die here at Mercy. John Doe took off. The hell? Maybe he's not really the Grim Reaper. Maybe he's Houdini. Well, it must have helped him. Yeah, maybe. Oh, by the way, that name you asked for? William Bream. You're kidding, right? Would I kid you? <sighs> if I were Mr. Bones, where would I go? And I hope you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. I knew it. How did you get out of your restraints? Please. I took out the dinosaurs. He thinks a couple of belts are gonna hold me. <laughs> did you look up Bill Bream? Doesn't prove a thing. Well, but I got you wondering, don't I? You could have gotten Bream's name off the internet. Do I look like I own a computer? Death certificates are public records. Now look, are you gonna go back to your room or do I have to call security? Calm down, there's no need for threats. If you must know, his name was in here, just like all the others. So you found a pen on the way down here, so what? Now are you coming or not? Could we have a second, please? Anyway, like I was saying, I, I just wanted you all to know that I quit. I know what you're thinking. 
Wish I'd made this decision a few days earlier, but that's the way it is. All right. Take it easy, Dave. You know who I've been thinking about a lot lately? Lin Po Wong. Do me a favor, save it for Dr. Rand. She was this little old Asian woman, fourth century BC. She was a peasant, but very enlightened. She had this way of talking about life. And you know, all I can say is, I finally understood what all the fuss was about. With her, I was really tempted to, you know, look the other way for a couple of years. But I mean, really tempted. But in the end, like all the others, Good night, everybody. You had to go. All right, enough already. What, what, what do you want me to say? You, you want me to say your death? OK, your death. You satisfied? Great. Now you're patronizing me? Look, I really want to be convinced here. Come on, come on, come on. Open it, open it. It's a joke? Am I laughing? This is impossible. People die every day. Not anymore, they don't. Yeah, the obituaries. Check them, will you? And? No one in the whole city? Yeah, I know it's weird. Look. Hey, that's New York, L.A., Chicago. Yeah, I'm good. Know anybody in London, Rome, Bora Bora? I admit, it's very, very strange, OK? The odds that no one would die for 24 hours in anywhere is, but it has to be astronomical, but it doesn't have anything to do with you. You're sure? Yes, I'm sure. Look, look, you are a very, very clever, very delusional human being, but you are not death. Hi, Jaybird. Please, God, watch over my family. Keep Jaybird safe. That's all I ask. That's all. I'm sorry. Sorry, is everything okay? Mm, the power yeah. went out. I thought I heard yelling. No, everything's fine. I'm fine, really. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> Watching your mom go through that agony for weeks must have been rough. I remember you from when I came to take her. That look of determination on your face. Like you'd never let anyone suffer like that ever again. You might say I'm the reason you became a doctor. You really are death, aren't you? You want to hit me? Go ahead, sir, and I understand. All that stuff about you quitting, is that true? You saw the obituary page. No more death, ever. Ever is a long time. Like I said, they're not gonna be too happy with me walking out. They'll put on the pressure. <laughs> and when they squeeze... They can squeeze all they want. Okay, you... You've got to stay strong here. So you think I'm doing the right thing? Hell yes. Could be drawbacks. Well, like, like overpopulation? Yeah, the world could get pretty crowded. Well, we can deal with that. I like your attitude. Don't you see? This changes everything. What you've, what you've done here is... It's a miracle. I'm tearing up here. Great. Oh, code yellow, I... Where are you going? I'll be back as soon as I can. Jay, it's fine. I'm off the meter. Don't go anywhere, OK? We still have a lot to talk about. Contact burn unit. Tell them we got eight coming in. They're going to be busy. What do we got? Gas truck went head to head with a bus. Get an IV started here, Linda. 
Let's go, let's go, let's go. I need saline, I need an IV stab here now, okay? Let's get on it. Linda! This isn't my... I'm getting no blood pressure here. What? We need some more. Look at the monitors. There's no heart rate, no blood pressure, nothing. Well, then there must be something wrong with the monitors. I'm getting no blood pressure here. Come on. What the hell is going on here? These people are all flatlined. But they can't be. They're still moving. for you. I kill flowers, too. Bet you never thought about that. <laughs> it's not just people and animals. It's grass, trees, roses. Bring death to them all. The other day, I saw a rose. Uh, kind of like this one. For the first time, I stopped, and I thought, my god, that is... It's beautiful. And I knew I... I didn't want to kill that rose. Or anything. Or anyone. Ever again. What did you want to say to me, Jay? You have to come back to work. You don't want to do that. It doesn't matter what I want. You don't have a choice. Do you know what this means? Yeah. Yeah, life without you isn't a miracle. It's a curse. Unless you return to work, people will suffer and never die. But you knew that all along, didn't you? I had my suspicions. Guess I didn't want to believe it. You want proof? Just go down to the ER. One day off in four and a half billion years. <laughs> it's gonna have to do. Come on. Tell me, Jane. When was the last time you stopped and smelled the roses? We do not have time for this. Come on. I think we do. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Between college, then med school. Let's just say it's been a while, no? Here. Ah, it's not gonna hurt. Remember that smell? Life. Bringing me back into the world, you sure that's what you want to do? I'm sure. Looks like you're back in business. Put my book back now, if you don't mind. Open it. Why? Please. Funny. Yeah. They have quite a sense of humor, don't they? Those patients down there need... No! <gasps> Maybe you should sit down. aneurysm. What? Your name was in the book, Jay. 
It's your turn. But I'm only 26. It's not fair. It's not... Now you know why I'm always depressed. I don't suppose there's any way I could talk you out of this, huh? You know, you just... Just put me back. Forget it ever happened. I'm tempted. I'm really tempted. That's not how it works, right? Afraid not. Time to go. All right, there's just one other thing I need to know. That gunshot victim, Fred Jonas, who came in last night, who really saved him, me or you? If you hadn't been in the room, kid, he would have been in my book. How does it feel to save a life, if you don't mind my asking? Felt good. Felt real good. Yeah. That's what I thought. Life and death walk side by side. They are partners in the cycle of existence. If you don't believe it, just talk to Dr. J. Ferguson, now a first-year resident in the Twilight Zone.